Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. Before we begin, I'd just like to say thank you to Resync. Resync has two products that they are now um, launching. It's Resync uh, Collagen Peptides. And I actually take this. It's a really great product and it supports um, circulation and strengthening um, every layer of your um, body. And it also helps with um, reducing muscle soreness. And I've been using it and I've been putting it in my matcha tea and it works great. I like it a lot. And Resync Recovery. Now, Resync Recovery is great for um, the nighttime. Uh, they suggest that we uh, take this at night. And it ha is, is, has uh, an ingredient, it's the number one uh, nitric oxide booster. And it's also taken by professional athletes because it helps you recover energy and it helps address the inflammation and it positively impacts the inflammatory markers. Uh, so it, it helps with reducing a lot of inflammation in your body, which helps with pain and helps with soreness. So these are two great products by Resync, and I'd like to thank you so much for sponsoring this show. And now I'd like to introduce our very special guest. It's Rachel Farmsworth. She is a great individual, and she has so many great things to tell us about that I'm going to just take it over and give it to her because she has comp so many accomplishments and she does so many things. I think it's best that you hear from her. So welcome to the show, Rachel. I want you to tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm Rachel Claire Farnsworth. I'm a transformational life changer and I specialize in releasing anxiety and autoimmune disease. Um, and I suppose <clears throat> it, it wasn't something that I've always done. It was something that I sort of fell into. I was doing all the, well, my daughter had got an autoimmune disease when she was a year old. Wow. And we were, we were thinking, we were doing all the things that we were told we needed to do, conventional stuff. And she was in pain for 14 years. She'd been on steroid, um, methotrexate for two, for several years. And for two years, she'd been in drug-induced remission. And in the meantime, I just trained in advanced hypnotherapy. At the same time, my daughter came off the drugs. And she'd been in drug-induced remission for two years. They thought she ought to come off the drugs and see if she'd outgrown it. And we were really excited that she would, you know, possibly be yeah. at um, symptom-free, medication-free and all that stuff. Only that wasn't to be because eight weeks after taking the drugs, she got a flare-up in her knee. It was really swollen. And they said she needed to go back on the drugs again. And Emily, my daughter, and I just remember looking at each other in that doctor's room and just, we can't do that again. We'd seen what normal life was like for those eight yeah. weeks of mm -hmm. going going out instead of being in the in the toilet watching her throw up because it made her sick. This, this yes. drug that she was taking made her violently ill. Um, and so what we did, we, um, we, Emily and I just looked at each other and said, we can't do that again. But I'd also just trained in this method in June. And it was now October 2018, so the year. And I'd not really done anything with the method. It just interested me. That's why I trained in it, no other reason. But we decided to have a session together because I know that other people have got results using physical conditions. I had a big stumbling block because I wasn't them. It was like, oh, can I do this? It's my daughter. It's a big deal. Yeah. Especially they say one to three sessions is usually enough to release one one thing like that seems like a massive big what if I fail thing right and so we decided that you know even if I did 50 sessions it was still worth it if it was slow at least it was progress right so she decided that yes she would be happy to have that session neither of us have got any expectations in that and so she was lying on her bed and I just relaxed her and it was very much like hypnotherapy by numbers like one relax the client step two right regress back step three you know and it was it wasn't perfect but it worked amazingly in one session we got to her root cause and for her it was that she needed pain to be like everybody else yes and in the session I was like wow this is amazing it's working but then I'm like hold on I'm not in pain who's your everybody yeah and she was able to say in that session that she was it was her brothers and her cousin because all, they'd all had pain of their own. Right. And there's four, four years and four days between all four of them. So they're really close in ages. And so she, and she's very empathetic. So she needed pain to be like them. And that one of them had got, well, there's lots of different things. There was asthma, cancer, um, hernia, that kind of thing. But they mm -hmm. were all better. 
that was a per and she could see that even if they weren't that her pain wasn't helping anybody especially herself so in that moment she was able to release it and she's been pain free symptom free medication free since then and that is she is my why because it was like we were doing all those things that we thought we were the only option and um, and she's been pain free since then she's she's got a, a life back she didn't have much of a childhood but she has got a life back now she's 19 next next month and that's awesome so that gave me that inspiration to yeah. start what else can I do you know right maybe I can help somebody else so I started doing I started renting a room out locally and getting clients in and that's where it all started that's amazing. You know, I, I have someone in my family that ho has an autoimmune disease and it, it basically, you know, it, it took over their life. It, you know, it, it caused them to have other conditions and, you know, they had to battle with it and, you know, they, they went from doctor to doctor and, and they weren't able to find a solution. And some of those medications that you had mentioned can be very harsh. They have a lot of harsh side effects and each person has different side effects depending on the person. Everyone's going to respond to the medications differently. And uh, it could be very hard when you have, you know, strong side effects to try to live a normal life. You know, the medication takes control over your, over your body. And even though it may be helping some things in your body, it's taken away a lot of other things. So it's like That's a right. battle. You seem to be swapping symptoms, really. It's a, a juggling act, isn't it? Which would you rather have? Um, and that's how we felt. But since doing that, I've been, I mean, that was 2018 when I worked with Emily. Right. Um, I have now, I'm now a soul speak practitioner as well. And that's Julia Cannon, Dolores, Dolores Cannon's daughter. I don't know if you've heard of her. Mm -hmm. But Julia talks about how the body is uh, messages and how on the right side, it's the right, right here, right now right. problem. And on the left, it's in the past. And so understanding that now, and it was Emily's legs really that she wasn't able to move forward from. That was the right. thing. And you can see it now when you've got when you know what the what the actual you know the because the body is the link between the subconscious and the conscious mind. That's yes, all it, it is. is. Mm -hmm. Pain and symptoms are just messages. So I'm actually writing a book as well called Decoding the Body's Messages. I like for myself. That. So that um yeah, it just felt really powerful because you now I've helped so many clients, I can see even more how the link is there. You know, and it's yes. just, it's amazing when you know what the body's really telling you. Well, the body um, always speaks to you, you know, and people don't exactly. realize that no. Even chronic pain. It's saying, Hey, there's something wrong. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's releasing a message to the brain. You know, when you have a problem, that part of the body is releasing a, a, a message to the brain and it's causing pain because there is something wrong. Your body is trying to heal it. And it's telling you, hey, my leg is, you know, there's something wrong with your leg or there's something wrong with your arm. Same thing with inflammation and all the other things. It's trying to speak to you. And the thing is, we have to take a step back and understand those messages that our body gives to us. And, and our bodies might speak each person in a different way. It's understanding your body, understanding the triggers, what's causing them, and then finding a solution, I think. What do you think about that? Absolutely. I think the body is... It speaks quite literally to us. Um, I mean, I've not got any thyroid now. I had that removed um, mm -hmm. in, several years ago now, way before I knew all, all this, unfortunately. And for me, the, well, the thyroid's all about not being able to speak up. Right. And I was in most emotionally abusive relationships. So that was why it wasn't safe to speak up. Right. And if I'd understood that back then, I could have not only probably saved my thyroid I could also save myself a lot of pain right in, in emotionally abusive relationships and healing that but I hadn't got a clue so yeah it, it's, it's amazing when you understand what the body's really saying isn't it Oh, definitely. Because even mental health, you know, 70% of our illnesses are caused by stress. So when you're going through even mental health issues, because I know you were talking about anxiety also previously, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, you work with people with chronic pain, anxiety, all different types of diseases and conditions. You know, when you're having mental, you know, um, issues and you're going through, like you said, an abusive relationship, it's not only affecting, you know, um, your, your emotions, but it's affecting your body as well.
and people don't realize that. And, and, you know, when, you know, it could also cause other conditions to occur and, you know, people are battling with more than one condition and it could also, it could stem from an issue going on in your own life. Mm, absolutely. Because um, for example, like anxiety, um, subconscious minds are there to keep us alert predominantly, keep us alive. So what better way than keeping us alert and being Having anxiety now is because of all those things that you've gone through as a mm -hmm. child or younger. Right. So it's like a string of lights lighting up in your head, ding, 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 all the way down. That's right. Remembering that first time it, you were felt triggered by anxiety. And it could be that you were standing up at school at four years old and the teacher called you stupid. Of course, that's not a very nice thing to do, to say and to feel all those ashamed, embarrassed, just want the, the ground to swallow you up. Right. And then the next time, like maybe your mum said, Oh, you'll never be able to tie your shoelaces or something. And it's going on from there. And then being maybe bullied at school or the boss being nasty or whatever it was. And it's all those things, or even being held at knife point, you know, it it, can, it doesn't have to be significant trauma. It can be something that you would now as an as an adult, you'd think, really, is that it? Because it it was really um traumatic to stand up in school and and get the question wrong and all the classmates laughing at you that that's massive trauma to that little girl or little boy oh, so definitely. that's what it's about and it's about going back to the root cause and healing that's how i do it i go back to the root and find it because the subconscious mind knows it's recorded everything yes and that's the beauty of it it's recorded everything you just need to go back and it doesn't have to take long when you heal at the root Mm -hmm. it really doesn't now what type of um therapy like what's the procedure like when you're trying to go back into the subconscious mind because a lot of times we block things out and that's a, one of the reasons why we don't remember things is sometimes you know traumatic events happen and you subconsciously block them out you know you know and then some you know they say too also it's the worst things that we tend to remember and it's the good things sometimes that we forget i guess so it depends on the individual and how they um how they actually how their body and mind works themselves but um you know how do you go back into the subconscious how do you get them to remember things that they aren't currently remembering at the moment it's just about being relaxed it's just um I'm, i give them a recording to listen to to start with before we have our session together so it gives them the um, it's like building rapport without actually working with them. So they go in and out of that hypnotic, hypnotic state, which is just about being relaxed. Like, there's nothing yes. strange about it. It's like that uh, in-between stage of being awake, being asleep. You just relax. And by relaxing your body, you're relaxing your mind. Mm -hmm. By relaxing your mind, you're in the subconscious. So it's like daydreaming, really. So I just talk to them and we just go back to a scene, place, event. There's all to do with whatever the issue they is that they want to work with. Right. And all of a sudden, you just click your fingers, and all of a sudden, they're just thinking about an event. So, I mean, just recently, I had a client was, um, it was why because we were working with anxiety, but with like week two, it was like, oh, I feel okay with anxiety now, but what I'm, I want, when I want to do what I really want to do, my mind's just going, no, you can't do that. So, it's, right, it's like, I really want to be able to just go, I'm going to get on with that. So there was something stopping her. So we had a look at that. And she went back to being eight years old. She's like, I don't even know why I'm here. I'm probably not in the right place. I said, no, you're absolutely where you need to be. But, um, so she was, she was eight years old. She was asked by the teacher to put some paints out for the class. Mm -hmm. And she got these tube of paints rather than powder paints. And, and the teacher told her off and said, you silly girl, blah, 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 blah. Um, you got it wrong. But actually, with the teacher, they didn't wasn't specific yes. about what she needed to be getting at. Right, exactly. So then, the, then the, the the my my client was then washing the pots and, and like getting rid of the paint. And then again, she was told off because she was wasting paint. So it didn't matter what she did; she was never going to be right. That was how she believed it. So right. her subconscious mind was like putting the brakes on. Well, you can't do anything. You're going to get it wrong anyway. So let's just not stop you. It's just stop you from doing that effort. And then you won't be wrong. That's basically what it was about. Right. And we went back to several scenes all to do with that as well. So she could see, well, she's not eight anymore. 
And actually, she was able to see that that teacher wasn't really good because she wasn't empowering her or any of the others. And she wasn't able, to, you know, the teacher was just blaming her instead of looking at her own instructions and realising she hadn't really been that specific in what she was asking. And um, so she was able to, she had no idea that that's where it was going to go back to. So it's just, um, you know, it's so totally amazing when you look at it. But she's not thought about that, probably since she was from me. So it's just crazy, isn't it? What we hold on to. We don't know what we're holding on to. And that's why I love I love doing that detective work and helping the clients find out where it is and what, what it is that's stopping them from living the life they want to. Yes, that is is very interesting. And, you mm-hmm. know, I find too, once you find out the problem, how do you solve the problem? Because I even had a client that, you know, had an alcoholic father and the father would, you know, when he got drunk, he would say not so nice things to the client. And then the client said to me, you know, when I was trying to speak with her and we were, we were getting back to the root cause, she goes, well, you know, because I was t- telling her about all her accomplishments and how great of a person she is. And she goes, well, you know, when someone tells you over and over again, you know, certain things, you tend to believe it after a while. So how do you get the client to actually realize that they are a better person and they aren't a screw up and they aren't this or they aren't that? You know, how do you solve that issue and make them realize the the good things about themselves, their achievements and how they are more than what they interpret themselves to be? That's such a good question, because it's the first part is all about the detective work and finding out right. where it all began. The second part is about the, the reframe and empowering them. So I have a very similar one, actually, what you just talked about, because um, I have been dealing with alcohol uh, problem with, with several clients recently. And, yeah, it's about hearing that you're not lovable and you're not this and that and the other. But I'm, I, I go in and just say, well, look, you're not eight years old anymore. You don't live with these parents. Mm-hmm. Um, all these people, these caregivers, and I get them to say, "Well, that's not me now. I'm not eight. Um, and just because my dad didn't know, didn't know how to love me, does not mean I'm not lovable. And that's the thing. It's just the twist of it because if someone, if if someone doesn't feel love in childhood, for example, then that with belief is that I'm not lovable. I'm never going to be lovable. My needs don't matter." all that stuff right so right. that means me framing it like well actually your dad couldn't give you what you needed in that moment and that's not your fault right it's his lack of for whatever reason he wasn't able to give you what you needed probably because he hadn't healed his trauma perhaps mm-hmm. so it's just looking at that and really empowering them and sometimes get them to hug themselves like hug that little eight-year-old isn't she adorable? Isn't she amazing? Oh, yes, and they're crying because they're like, oh, well, there I am. Yeah. And it's um, it's all about the reframe. So I then ask them, how do you feel about that man? And I want them to like, feel better and at least like indifferent to it. Yes. Um, and that's the beauty of it. When they, they can see that actually they are lovable and they do matter. And they're not in that dysfunctional family, perhaps. Anymore, right. You know, where the dad was an alcoholic too maybe or whatever and it's about looking at that and seeing it and, and knowing that they are powerful and then moving on to the next one so I always go back to at least three scenes three events because it's like a table if you've got four legs you're not three table legs down then that belief doesn't stand up anymore and that's that's what we do so it's linking those those together seeing how it's emotionally threaded because your mind's brought those up for a reason how is it ready together emotionally? What's the little paragraph or statement around that to link them together, get them to do it, and then empower them from it? Because they're not they're not held at knife point right now either. Right. Um, and I had a client in the beginning of my career actually that was held at knife point at six years old. Wow. And and she came to me, she was so scared, and her husband had to bring her to me. But she was telling me what happened she was on the way to get an ice cream at the beach when this man came along and held her at knife point but she got away and I'm seeing this six-year-old who was you know her younger version of her like wow you got away how incredible are you and she's seeing herself as a victim and this man may come back and hurt me again right like, wow you got away that's amazing you're powerful you know you not see 
you know, as an adult, how great you were. And so she gradually, she was able to, to start with, she was like, no, but no, but no, but and I'm like, no, really. So she was able to see that for herself. And there were several scenes that she went back to as well. One was a car accident, but she felt like a victim again. And I was like, but you did all the things you needed to do. You're amazing. And at the end of the session, she walked out, she left my room because we were face to face back then. And she came downstairs and she was just sort of stopped dead. And so much so that I backed into her, ran into her. And she just stopped dead because she was looking in the mirror. She yeah. said, I'm never looking in the mirror. I'm like, okay. She said, but I'm loving that. And I'm like, what? She said, well, it's a tiny scar that I got from the attack. I never look in the mirror because of the scar. But actually, that's my warrior wound. I'm like, yes, it is, my darling. Isn't that incredible? So, and then she went my birthday card on her own and she hadn't been shopping on her own for over five years wow so that's the quick reframe when you when you get it and you like because I just saw her as amazing yeah you know, how incredible she was six years old she got away from that moment. that's amazing because you know unfortunately a lot of people unconsciously uh, repeat the behaviors of their dysfunctional, you know, environment that they grew up with, you know, and sometimes, well, actually, a lot of times they will marry a spouse that has the same quality as the abusive person in the family or, you know, or they, the same type of mother or father. And, and then the behavior repeats itself, you know, they've learned from mm -hmm. their mother or father, they've learned these behaviors, and now they exemplify it. And they don't even realize it. They're just repeating what they learn from their childhood yes. and then, you know trying to have to you know stop and and break them from that so how do you you know help them realize well you know while you're doing this therapy you you know maybe you do come to a realization and they do realize that they're they're repeating the behaviors that they hated the most about that person and That's then how right. change it's that tricky subconscious mind isn't it it looks yeah. to keep you in the familiar yeah. And even though you're that uncomfortable, comfortable thing. And that's what it does. It's like trying to put a happy ending onto the dysfunctional part. You know, your dad or a sibling or whatever that didn't work out. It's like, oh, look, I'm going to prove it worked. Let's find another person very similar and repeat the pattern. But it's about looking at it and going, but, but look at you. You're amazing and, and changing it. And like, well, what does love actually look like to you? What does it really feel like? And where did you have love from? You know, who was able to give you love? Maybe it's a grandparent. Right. How did they make you feel? Oh, they made me feel loved. And they get, you know, they were, it was warm and safe and loving and kind. And right, okay. So that maybe putting that happy ending on her, on that relationship with them rather than yes. your dad or, you know, a dysfunctional thing. Because now you've got a template of what love looks like. Right. You can then consciously transfer that onto something else that you actually want and that's how I do that and it's just like it's not your fault mm -hmm. it really isn't your fault it's no, just that your subconscious mind yes is that cunning thing and it's just repeating patterns because that's all it ever knew that's all it exactly. is exactly understanding that now, mm -hmm. how, how do you help people with chronic illnesses? Because I understand you help people with anxiety and chronic pain and you, you helped your child, you know, with their mm -hmm. autoimmune disease. How do you help people when they're going through a chronic illness or they're going through a traumatic condition or disease? In a very similar way, really, because there's always emotional pain lying behind the presenting symptoms. Right. So it's just looking at why is it that you've got whatever condition that you've got. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, diabetes is usually about lack of joy in the life. It's about finding out where that began, what's going on, and understanding it. That same way as I've just sort of said with anxiety, it's just it looks different mm -hmm. because it's a physical condition. And, and as I said in the beginning, I hadn't quite understood the correlation back with my first, you know, when I was doing with Emily. Right. But, emotional pain and, and physical pain is really the same it's just your yes. body going can you take a look please it's like waving yes. a flag at you right um so it's just understanding that and there's always even though you don't want the physical pain there's always a reason it's there um and aim a plan to it and mm -hmm. it's there to usually to protect you usually 
um, and it's to protect you from. So it's just looking at that. Why is it there to protect me from? Or it's reminding me that I'm eight years old mm -hmm. and then this happened. And when I felt powerless, when I felt helpless, when I felt ashamed or guilty, it's about that. Okay, what, what's the next thing? So go through, we do that four times to find out what the aim, the goal, the plan and the reason is right. of why the symptoms are there. And then when we can understand it and how old it thinks you are and all the emotions that you've attached to that particular event, again, linking it together and then releasing it because you're not eight, you're not 12, you're not 16, you're not even the same you that you were last year. It's about looking at that and then releasing it and then thanking that part for being there because even though you don't want it it's there because it was there to protect you or to sometimes it's there to hinder you or punish you i need to punish them before the people punish you because it's going to feel less bad right. if i do it myself than other people and so it's just looking at why it's there and then being able to release that the same way and thanking it for being there because it was trying to help you and right. then asking the client what do they need to do to let go of it and it can be tying it to a pink helium balloon and watching it float away, which is what my daughter did. It can be right. <laughs> putting it in a Harry Potter room of requirements. I had yes. that for bulimia once. Um, it can be all sorts of things, like putting it in a glass bottle and putting it on a on the sea and watching it float away, or on a river, or Casper the ghost and watching it evaporate. Yes. It's all about getting the client to do whatever they need to do, rather than me saying, right now you need to tie it to a pink helium balloon. It's because it's the client's uh, imagination that's going to work the best. That's what right. do you need to do. Giving it over to them so that they've got that control and the power to release it themselves is, is right. really powerful. Yes, because I'm a big believer in in creating, helping people release the power within them. And I, mm -hmm. think, the, I think the power of positivity really helps people get through any you know, obstacle in their life, because I find that, you know, instead of looking at things in a negative way, if we can retrain our mind and focus on the positiveness, okay, I do have this and I do have that, but what good came out of it? How did I change as a person, you know, sometimes can make you focus on the whole issue differently and actually could help heal you in many ways. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I agree. I think it is all about it's looking at the lesson that that, that thing is teaching you, isn't it? And it, you know, it's there because looking at the why, um, and link. Yeah, it is that, and linking it together, and just understanding why it was there, so that then you can learn from it and understand it. Understanding is the most un, uh, liberating thing. Once you can understand it, you can then let go of it too. Right. Exactly. And I think that's the key too, is letting go. You know, if mm. we hold on to things and we don't let go, then, you know, that dark shadow will always follow us and those problems will always be there. It's letting go, like you said, either in a bottle, we, whether you put mm. it on a dove and let it fly away, you mm. know, the key I think is, is learning how to let go, realizing that the past is the past. We can't change the past and no, but know, we can reframe it that's the we beauty. can reframe it yes we can yeah. reframe it and then focus on our present and focus on the future and then move forward in life and mm. let that past pull us back you know because you can't yeah. change it is you know you can only understand it and then mm. you know work on changing your present self don't you think absolutely but i think by releasing that past you are changing your present yes and I'm also a future life practitioner as well. So we can go into the future and um, five years time, 10 years time, see where you are, um, finding out all the, the gorgeous stuff that you're doing so that then you can be laser focused more mm -hmm. into, um, you know, finding yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm I had one person that was an opera singer. Isn't that great? But she's at uni right now. And so she was able to see herself on stage. And she was describing herself and the rock of a beautiful engagement ring that she got on her finger. The detail was incredible. And I said, oh, how did you get there? She goes, oh, there was somebody at uni. As I'm graduating, there was a headhunter there. I said, you'd better make sure you get to that, that <laughs> event. Don't miss it. So don't do a sickie on that one. You've got to get there. So that was really incredible. So it's beautiful to be able to see yourself in the future as well. And because past the time actually is 
isn't linear like we think it is. It's kind of all happening at the same time, although that would take a lot to get your head around. Right. So because you can go back into the past or past life, you could also go into the future as well and see yourself and learn from it. It doesn't mean that's definitely going to happen. It just means right. it's a possibility. And so you can still change it. Yes. It's just an, just one of those windows of, oh, you know, you could do this or you could do that, something different. Or you can go backwards and forwards. Or what if I'm going to decide to be a chemist or something? Mm-hmm. Or what if I decide to be an opera singer? What if I decide to write 20 book? It's that right. sort of thing. You can go backwards and forwards and find out, you know, the best options for you, which is fabulous as well. I think it also gives you, it helps you create a strategic plan in your head. So you have, Absolutely. you know, an yes. idea where you're headed. And like you said, you could always make changes because sometimes you go in one direction and something just occurs and it brings you, it get you do a whole U-turn and you go into a different direction and there's a different mm-hmm. pathway awaiting you. But having that strategic, strategic plan, I think organizes you and keeps you focused on yes. what your goals are and where you should be headed exactly it's not like just throwing spaghetti at the wall it's like you've got that tunnel vision more laser focus right of um, where you want to be maybe it's writing a book and you can see the book title as well right and what the chapters look like it's that kind yeah. of detail that then inspires you in the present moment and you know gets those creative juices going like right okay now I know what I need to do isn't that exciting instead of being lost and confused you've actually got some plan that you can work towards now do it when you work with your clients do you like them to journal so when they get these visions or they come up with these thoughts or ideas do you like them to write it down on paper so they can more visually see it or create their own strategic plan according to what's on paper I don't actually. What I tend to do is get them to bring that energy of where they have, what they're feeling in that future mm-hmm. and bringing that energy back to the now. Okay. And so that the more energy they have around that new thing, the, the quicker time collapses because we are energetic beings. We attract yes. what we are. Right. So if we've got that energy of that thing, then yes. you're going to get it quicker, aren't you? So it's about oh, definitely. And anchor it, anchoring those feelings in as well. Yes. By um using um pressure point you know just like doing that with your hand or um onto your stomach onto your sacral chakra that kind of thing of just like anchoring that in so that anytime you want to you can come back to those feelings as well which is great yes definitely now tell me more about this book that you're writing i want to hear a little about it so you have a title what is the title called it's called decoding the body's messages Mm -hmm. and because the, the subconscious and the conscious mind the body is a link between the subconscious and conscious mind that's oh, definitely. the beauty of it I've written several chapters um one of which was about skin and because um I put that at the beginning of the chat of the book because I've got photographs that I've been able to share and the clients have kindly said I can share them and so with a visual image of skin healing um in a very short space of time when you clear it is incredible so that's where it started and now I'm working through um clients that I've worked with I've got a stack load of as you can imagine stack load of um notes that I've made but it's Mm -hmm. it's about looking at the emotions behind it rather than I'm not going to be going you know this client x client x came to me it's about looking at the patterns and looking at the um the threads that are similar Mm -hmm. in, in each thing that I've worked with whether it's addiction whether it's uh, chronic pain whether it's arthritis whatever it is and just looking at that and seeing that you know the link between them all and, and right. sharing those sort of stories and as well using the um information that i've learned through soul speak with julia cannon as well that she's equally i mean i had a dream about that before i actually found the book and um, that i was going to be able to quote unquote diagnose somebody in several minutes and I'm like oh that'd be cool wouldn't it and I found that book and I was like oh right so people are you know if anybody's got problems with their legs it's about not being able to move forward from something and if it's Mm -hmm. in their right side it's not moving forward from something in the present moment right and on the left it's something in the past so it's that kind of like oh so um, my discovery calls when I chat with clients now, I've got much more insight into what's going on without actually 
working with the subconscious i can i can read the body and what it's actually saying in a general kind of term obviously not specific because i don't know what they've gone through but but in a general thing of oh well that's generally around right oh isn't that funny because that issue started when Mm -hmm. ah you see so it's just it gives credibility as well that people can see that you know there is uh, it's, it's just your body giving you a message it's just yes. understanding it it's a bit like a warning light isn't it on a on a vehicle oh, the definitely. warning light comes on and yes. it's just you asking to go under the hood under the bonnet and having a look and see what the problem is that's all I agree with you and is there anything that you can tell um listeners about is is it possible to do some of these therapies by yourself do you teach like some things people could do at home when they're by themselves, just like meditation, do you know, you don't always need an instructor. Are there things people could do at home to help heal themselves as well? I think it's about being mindful of what they say themselves a lot of the time. Um, like nurturing themselves, uh, like saying things like I'm calm and confident I, and self-assured. I can do anything I put my mind to. Um, rather And being mindful of what you're saying, like you say, I'm sick then your your but your mind will just accept whatever you tell it. Right. So it's about empowering you, being careful of what you say, because it's called spelling for a reason, you know, because our words create our reality. Yes. Very, very much so. So it's about looking at that and being conscious of what you're saying to yourself and changing it around. Because we're so negative, aren't we? We so do that negative self-talk. Yeah. So it's about switching that into something more positive more empowering like being your best friend being the living parent yeah and nurturing yourself that way of like i can of course i can do this it's, you know it's gonna be fine i'm safe i'm calm and um, that kind of stuff really helps yeah um but yes if you want something i would suggest most people have got um a recording app on their phone so it's a, you could record something whatever you want you know I'm a, I'm I'm a millionaire. I'm getting all this money coming in from all these different places. You know, well, it, because your mind believes you. So your mind will record something beautiful that you want. Yeah, record it in bed. You know, play play while you're going to sleep in bed at night. It doesn't right. even have to feel like well. So that's a really good takeaway. Just to do something like that and just keep replaying it because your mind learns by repetition. Right. So it, so it's a good great idea, really. Yeah, I think it is because it will build positive energy. It will give you the the forceful energy that you need when you wake up in the morning. I'm going to do it. I have an yeah. idea. I have a goal. I'm set. I have a strategic plan in my head, you know, and each day, the more you think about it, the more structured it gets. And then you could actually drive forward towards that goal. And people who have that drive are most of the people who actually succeed because they are driven. They have that driven force. And that's a great way to develop, I think, that driven force. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Yes, absolutely. And I've got um, a meditation that, I'm, that I've got that's just eight pounds as well. It's called Releasing Anxiety. So if anybody, any of you listeners are listening and they want that, that's on offer at the moment, just eight pounds. And it's different because I take you into the future as well, where you bring that lovely energy of feeling confident back into the now as well. So it's a bit different to, you know, other things that uh, you may have found already. So that it's just an exciting thing and it's got some music to it as well. So it's just a nice thing to listen to. Now, is that something they can download or something you sell? It's something you can download, yeah. Oh, okay. Now, is it something that they would find on your website or they would find it on YouTube? Um, I can give you my Linktree web um, link address. It's um, Linktree and then it's Wellness with Rachel Claire Farnsworth. Okay. So, um, and then all that one link takes you to all over the place. So it takes you to Facebook, takes you to the YouTube channel, um, takes you to my website. There's loads of things, lots of different links within that link that you can go to. Well, I'll put that in our description. That way everybody will have your information and they can go to all the different areas and they can utilize all the great stuff that you've taught us today. Now, before we go, 
you know, maybe you can give people a, like maybe two or three tips on how they can help improve themselves. Or if you, if there's anything that people should know and understand, you know, give them a couple of tips on how they can better improve themselves or find out what the root cause is, you know, and, and give people an idea, you know, some tips on how to begin, where to start and so forth. Okay. Well, and until I've written my book, <laughs> um, Julia Cannon's Soul Speak is a great thing. It's about 16 US dollars. It's a really fabulous thing to, to have a look at um, and understand how the bodies, what the messages are. Um, I, the other thing would be to start practicing a little bit of meditation. It doesn't have to be a long time. Just relax into your body and just concentrate on your breathing and just try and let any thoughts that you're thinking just float away mm -hmm. and just be in that present moment you don't have to you don't have to have that real big aha moment it's just coming back to yourself and giving yourself that little bit of quality time mm -hmm. um and going for walks in nature really helps as well just taking time out from the busy right. day and uh, maybe even standing next to a tree and feeling the energy of a tree because it right. just helps to slow down your breathing as well and just helps you to like come back to nature because we are part of nature it's just yes. that our lives have sort of moved us away from it yeah so I by agree. going back in there and just having a look and seeing all the beautiful things the birds singing or just a little blade of grass just growing at the side of you it's just appreciating and when we start to appreciate things the more you appreciate things the bigger that sort of gratitude thing goes yeah and, and gratitude I think it's so underestimated because it switches mm -hmm. the brain. Instead of looking at what you haven't got, you're looking at what you have. Yes. And then your mind looks at more of what you have or what you can have and what you can achieve. And then that expands your mind. Oh, definitely. Rather than shuts you down. So that's a, that's a really good tip as well. I even, I created a journal called the Positivity and Gratitude Journal. And in my new book, um, Empower Yourself, Don't Let Your Conditions Empower You, I talk about gratitude in the book because I think that's a big problem. Everybody wants, wants, wants. They focus on what they want, but they don't stop and really appreciate what's around them. And they don't appreciate the things they have. And they focus more on that. It wouldn't be so yeah. much, I want, I want, but thank you. Thank you. Kind of I think, feel. yes, that's right. And I want means it, it gives you that lack feeling. Yes. And then you're chasing that lack rather yes. than when you've got the gratitude, you're in that uh, being open to receive rather than the chasing the wanting. Yes. It's just being more open to it. And that's a totally different energy, isn't it? Oh, I think it's more positive energy. I think when Absolutely. you're when you're saying I want I want I want you'd feel like you're under accomplished and then yes. that gives you the negativity and that I think pulls you down but when you yes. say thank you thank you and you're you're being gracious for what you have you're realizing all the great things that you've accomplished all the things that around you that are so wonderful and I think that positivity actually gives you a really good energy and fires you up instead of pulling you down yes exactly and then you're going to get more of that wonderful energy because we are, like I said at the beginning, we, we, we are energetic beings. So if you've got that lack, you're going to get more lack, unfortunately. But yes. if you've got that abundant feeling of, oh, look at me, I've got, you know, there's two lights in this room already or whatever it is. Yes. It's, you know, it's just looking at what you have, not what you haven't. Mm -hmm. And that already sort of switches your mind on to receiving more and being more open. And it, yes. it is a better, like you said, it's a much more positive energy to be in. And you're going to get more. Oh, definitely. Most of nature, isn't it? I think so. Now, when do you expect your book to be out? Do you have an idea when it might be ready or you're oh, not really sure yet? I'm not sure. I'm hoping by the end of next year, mm -hmm. giving myself a little bit of time. Yes. In the meantime, I have got another book out, which is a co-author book, which is okay. Me Too, But Never Again. And I share my, my chapter in there about uh, abuse that I went through. Um, and I felt I needed to be, I wanted to be in that book. There's 10 authors in that book. Mm -hmm. And I felt it was necessary because I do help people release yes. trauma. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's me saying, yes, I have that reference point too. Um, I understand it. I've been through it. 
and I'm grateful for it now. And I know that sounds like really bizarre, but I'm grateful for it because I've got that reference point. It means right. I can help more people. Yeah. Because I know how it feels on the other side of the coin. So I often say to my clients, roll the dice again. I'm you, you're me. Yeah. So it's just that there's no judgment. It's just let's just have a look and see what happens, see what's yes. going on. And because so many times we blame ourselves, we could have, should have, I shouldn't have been there, I could have done this, I could have done that. Right. But it's about understanding that you're not to blame mm -hmm. and it's not your fault. Right. And but to empower you from it as well, instead of feeling like the victim, like that girl I was lady I was talking about when she was held at knife point, saying right. that really that she's a warrior and that she is amazing and she's she's got, you know, she's just uh, well, she's amazing and incredible. And right. going in that energy, knowing that she, you know, how amazing was she at six? Yeah. How can she accomplish? You know, wow. Yeah. Um, and it's it's about that. It's about releasing it and healing it. No longer being the victim, but being that warrior, standing right. in your own power again. Because that, the thing is, when you've gone through trauma, which we all have, you feel wounded. Yes. And the lacking. And then I, I describe that as like an onion because you've got layers and layers of trauma. Yes. But what we really are are diamonds. I often, yes. I often bring that out. So yeah. Diamonds of potential, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And sparkly. And that's so easy to love yourself when you feel like that. Oh, most because, definitely. Because that's all that's wrong with us, isn't it? We do we feel we, we forget to love ourselves because of the trauma that we've gone through that made us feel unlovable, unworthy, and shamed and guilty and all that. When we release that. You're in more of that energy of being powerful. Yes. And it, it, it radiates out instead of feeling wounded. It's different. And so it's easy to love yourself when you feel like that. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Now, what is the book's title again that you co-authored? It's Me Too, But Never Again. And where can people find that? That's on Amazon. Okay, awesome. That's great. Oh, and at the moment, it's just... It's 99 cents or about 81 pence UK money um, for two weeks. So, um, and it will be out in paperback very shortly as well. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Now, yeah. your your regular website, what is the name of your regular website? It's wellness with Rachel, R I C H E L dot co dot UK. Excellent. All right. You know, thank you so much for being on the show. This has been You're a welcome, wonderful David. experience. I think, you know, you've taught a lot of people, a lot of great things and, Excellent. you know, I'm very happy to have you on the show and, and thank you. You're welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. Thank you. You too.